out to the ball game. Take me 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 out with the crowd. This is the last time this year. So let me hear you. Good and loud. All right, Gary. A one. A two. Ah, uh, baseball. It's the sport of kings. That's tennis. It's the city by the bay. That's San Francisco. The history of baseball has been heavily disputed for over a hundred years. The game, along with other modern bat and ball games, likely evolved from the folk games played in old Europe, such as Nuren's Spell, a Yorkshire game also known as Trap Ball, which seems to originate from the 1300s and was exceptionally popular during the 18th and 19th centuries. The subtleties of Nuren's Spell are little known outside a tight circle of dedicated men. Other examples of games that closely relate to American baseball include a variant of tag called Prisoner's Base, which is thought to date back to the Renaissance period, and Cricket, the ever-popular English sport, which itself is related to a game called Hand In and Hand Out, which was banned by King Edward IV in 1477. When trying to determine the origins of the game, it doesn't help that the first mention of baseball in print is actually a misnomer. The ball once struck off, away flies the boy, to the next destined post, and then home with joy. What John Newberry was referring to in A Little Pretty Pocketbook was Rounders, an English game that was rather popular at the time. Another interesting reference was only recently unearthed from a report for the Whitehall Evening Post, a London newspaper founded in 1718. The article, published on September 19, 1749, reads, on Tuesday last, His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales and Lord Middlesex played at baseball at Walton in Surrey. Notwithstanding the weather was extremely bad, they continued playing several hours. The first American reference to the game, however, comes from the diary of one John Rhea Smith, a student of the College of New Jersey, which would become known as Princeton University. On March 22, 1786, John wrote the following. A fine day. Play baseball in the campus, but am beaten, for I miss both catching and striking the ball. Unfortunately, it appears that Mr. Smith wasn't too good at the game. If he was, we might be able to understand the difference between this based ball and modern baseball, or learn whether or not the two are even the same fundamental game. Apparently, however, the game was quite popular among the students, as the next year it was banned by the faculty. There are many amusements more honorable and more useful in which they are indulged. Therefore, the faculty think incumbent on them to prohibit both the students and grammar scholars from using the play aforesaid. The next mention of baseball in the U.S. was discovered by a historian called John Thorne in 2004, when he was reading through an 1869 book on Pittsfield history and found the over 200-year-old minutes of a Pittsfield town meeting from 1791. One notable section read, in Pittsfield, Massachusetts, to promote the safety of the exterior of the newly built meeting house, particularly the windows, a bylaw is enacted to bar any game of wicket, cricket, baseball, bat ball, football, cat, fives, or any other game played with ball within 80 yards of the structure. As an aside, I find it really funny that a great deal of the earliest references we have to baseball are records of it being banned. That's all about to change, though, as the next reference to American baseball comes from a communication received by the National Advocate, a newspaper that ran from 1812 to 1829. This small article was discovered, once again, by John Thorne, who's done a lot of work to uncover the history of this sport, and the article contains a spectator describing both baseball and his excitement for the game. I was last Saturday much pleased in witnessing a company of active young men playing the manly and athletic game of baseball at the retreat in Broadway. I am informed that they are an organized association, and that a very interesting game will be played on Saturday next at the above place, to commence at half past 3 o'clock p.m. Any person fond of witnessing this game may avail himself to seeing it played with consummate skill and wonderful dexterity. It is surprising, and to be regretted, that the young men of our city do not engage more in this manual sport. It is an innocent amusement, and healthy exercise, attended with but little expense, and has no demoralizing tendency. It seems like this is where the game really began to explode in popularity. 
According to an interview with William Rufus Wheaton, a lawyer and politician, so I guess his word isn't really worth much. But anyway, according to Wheaton, he wrote down the rules for playing baseball in 1837 for the Gotham's Club of New York, which in the early 1840s was renamed to the New York Ball Club. Then, in 1845, Alexander Cartwright, son of a merchant ship captain and the first recorded half-man, half-billy goat, founded the New York Knicks. Uh, no, not that one. The Knickerbockers were mostly formed because some of the Gothams thought the game had grown too large and wanted a more scrupulous group, which sounds like those D&D guys that won't even touch 5th edition, it's gotta be their own 3.5e homebrew or else you're a casual. Funnily enough, that same attitude is essentially what brought about the Knickerbocker rules, which, if I'm gonna be honest, there's some strange stuff in here. For instance, instead of feet or yards, the distance between the bases was measured in paces, which means they were anywhere from 75 to 90 feet apart from each other. Also, the ball had to be pitched like a horseshoe. You couldn't throw overhand until 1884. One of the weirdest things to read, however, is the fact that if you hit the ball out of the park, it was a foul. But apparently, a foul wasn't even a strike, you just kept going. This means that a batter could just purposefully hit foul balls until they got a pitch they liked. Ah, baseball players. Cheating since before there was a league. Basically, there was a bit of a divide now. You had the Gothams and the Knickerbockers, and by the next year, the two of them would be pitted against each other in what was largely recognized for many years as the first officially recorded game. On June 19th, 1846, the Gothams, who were at this point known as either the New York Ball Club, the New York Club, or the New York Nine, destroyed the Knickerbockers 23-1 in four innings. There are many unsubstantiated claims about this game, such as the belief that the Knickerbockers lost due to the best players for the club simply not being there, or the claim that Cartwright umpired for the game and fined a player six cents for swearing. Anyway, 12 years after this game, 16 clubs would meet and form the first organization meant to govern American baseball, the National Association of Baseball Players. The man chosen to draft the initial set of rules for the organization was Doc Adams, a member of the Knickerbockers. He changed the rules from putting 42 paces between bases to a solid 30 yards. He also supported banning the bound rule, which would allow an out to be called when the ball was caught by a fielder after one bounce. All in all, he had a major impact on the game. And well, there you have it. The rest is history. From Babe Ruth to Yogi Berra to Jackie Robinson to Derek Jeter, all of their stories are interesting and inspiring, but this is where baseball started. And this is how baseball became America's pastime.